this session i would like to discuss c conditions any programming language when you want to write programs conditions are very critical so usually imperative programming as i explained we write statement one after other um, when you write those statements it executes sequentially sometimes we might have set of statements we don't want to execute if we satisfy some condition so so we need to handle this decision making in any programming language in programming decision making is used to specify the order which statements are executed so using those decision making or what we call it as if statements we could change the order we execute those statements in order to build the condition uh, programming languages use relational operators so based on the programming languages the the relational operators might differ but most of the languages use same kind of operators as relational operators the relational operators are used to build conditions Rela in other words a relational operator check the relationship between two operands or what you call it as two maybe two variables operands or two variables if that relation is satisfied that usually it returns once or true if it is not satisfied it's written false or zero relational operators might use in if conditions and the next sessions we will learn how we use those relational operators in loops so some programming languages there is a specific type of variable called boolean variable in c basically one represent true and zero represent false so we don't have any specific boolean variables so in c if, if you want to check the equality or equal conditions so we must use two equal signs not the one equal sign is the two equal signs check the equality of two operands so for example if phi equal equal c3 or two equal sign phi equal 3 returns 0 because phi is not equal to 3 this operator is greater than operator example phi greater than 3 it's correct or true because of that it returns 1 so the other operator this is less than operator so when you apply phi less than 3 it returns 0 because it's false so this operator used to check the not equality condition so when you say phi not equal 3 it is correct or true because of that it returns 1 so when you have greater than or equal operator this is greater than or equal operator so when you have it so when you check for example phi greater than or equal 3 so obviously phi greater than 3 it returns once that is true so this is less than or equal operator so these are the set of relational operators which we can use in c programming language so one of the main command or what we call keyword we use to check the relational operator use relational operator is actually if conditions so using if condition we can decide whether to execute set of statement or to bypass it so for example we say if and we can build a, what we call it as logical expression by using relational operators and if that condition is satisfied set of statement will execute if not that set will ignore so when you see that in a flow chart so it comes to 
checking the expression, that means I, the condition which we built together or by you, using the relational operators, we built that. So if that true, the body of if will execute that the set of statement inside that body or inside this if block executes and then it comes to the outside of that or it comes to the rest of the statement if this is false so directly skip that part so using if we can then say only to execute some set of statement in case of that it true so if condition has a other part what we call it as else using the else we can check the opposite of if so for example we can say if this condition is satisfied this part will execute if it is not satisfied else part will execute so as you see in this flowchart so the program checks program check the condition first here and if it is satisfied this part will execute if it is false the other part will execute and then it comes out of this if else block so we can use single if statement like that or we can combine it with else statements sometimes we can check many conditions one after other so if you do so we call it as if else ladder or oh. so how do we build that so we have if and then condition set of statement so then we have else under else we can write another if with second condition so if that gets satisfied then this part will execute if false this part system comes to this part so in this part, we can have another if if we want, and then test the third condition. If that third condition satisfies, this section will execute. If not, it jump to the else of this if. So like if else, if else, if else, we can combine several ifs together and check several conditions together. right sometimes when you build relational when you use relational operators and build different conditions so we may we may be need to combine them together so these combinations of several conditions in order to combine these several conditions, we use what we call it as logical operators. In C, we can see three types of logical operators. We call it as AND operator, O operator, and NOT operator. So as you see in this, there are two conditions, C equal five and D equal two. So if you want to do something, if C equal five and D equal two, so how do you write it? Something like that. C two equal signs five, and we put and operator and this and is replaced by this and operator. We can write and and d greater than five like that. So if you want to, this one says if C equal to five or d greater than five. So if you want to take the opposite of that, C equal five and want to do c not equal phi so we can write c equal phi and this not operator not logical operator in front so it then inverse the condition so on the logical operator category in c language has three and operator operator and not operator with the and operator get if we combine two expressions logical expressions or logical conditions with and operator 
So both need to be satisfied to return true. In all other cases, it returns false. If you combine two logical expressions or conditions with cooperator, if one of these get true, the entire condition get true. So when you take not, basically it's opposite. So when we move on, you might see how we use those operators each other in, in our applications. So for example, I have this simple example, C code. Initially, it has three variables, A equal five, B equal five, and C equal 10. And then there is a variable called result. All of them are integer. So then I check two conditions or logical uh, statements. So there is a uh, expression. There is an expression called A two equals sign B, that is A, A, check A equal to B. And the second one check whether C greater than B. So then we combine them together and how it get interpret if A equal B and C greater than D. So then the result of that will assign to the variable for result. So in this example, initially A is fine, B is also fine. So then this condition is true. And we combine that with this. So there we check whether C greater than B. Value of C is five, uh, sorry, value of, value of C is 10, value of B is five. So C greater than B is correct. So if both are true then, or correct, because of that, and when, since we combine them with and, result and final result is true. So then result variable equal to one. So when you print the variable result here, we get one. That means final condition is true. So when you go to the next one, next one, this part is true. And this part, as you may understand, false. So since we join with and, so final result is false. So we get zero here. So in the third, so this is true and this is false. So since we combine it with O now, not N, we combine here with O. So since one of these is true and combine it with O, final result get true. So then this one actually one is true. When you come to the third one, we check A not equal B. When you say A and B, they are equal because phi it's not equal B, then this part get false. And this part, this part also false. If you join two conditions with O and both are false, final, is, final result is false. You see it's get false. And then we have A not equal B, actually A equal B, because of that A not equal B get false, but we put not operator in front because of that final result get true. As you see, final result get true. And then in this, we check A equal B, so that is true, and we take uh, opposite of that using not operator. So because of that, final result get false. So that's how this and O not operator works. So in order to check conditions, C programming la language has what we call ternary operators. So like it's a shorthand notation of if else operator. So using that, without if else, we can check the conditions. So the syntax of that is something like that here. So we can write a condition like that and put a question mark. So if that condition satisfies, so this statement will execute. And then we can put a colon and then put the second statement. So three parts of this such, such of a statement. So we have a condition, question mark, true part and four part. So if that condition get true, this will execute. So if this get 
in case of these phones, this part will execute. These two parts separated by the column. So that's how this operator works. So let's take our old uh, problem, the problem we consider in our very first class. So there we want to write a program to read temperature and display hot or cool based on the temperature value. So when you have a look on that flow chart, we start that and read the temperature and check the temperature value less than 30. If it is less than 30, we print cool. Otherwise, we print hot and then stop the program. So we use simple visual programming language, scratch for that. So you see it has also if else statements. So this is if condition, if that satisfy, this block will execute, else that this block will execute. How do we write it in C? Something like that. So in this simple C program, we scan the temperature. That means we read the temperature from the keyboard and we check whether that temperature greater than or equal 30. If so, we print that as we print cool. So this is equivalent version of the C for the same program, equivalent version of the solution in C here. This is in Scratch, you see how we get, how, how we write or how we implement our uh, solution. Okay, similarly, if you wish, we can write a program to do that. So in this, uh, write a pro program to solve this problem. So what, this problem, I am asking you to write a program to show the interest rate if someone enters the deposit amount. So this particular bank defines its interest rate something like here. If deposit amount is less than 1,000, it rate is 4%. If deposit amount is less than 10,000, uh, rate is 8%. If deposit allowed is less than 100,000, rate is 12%. In all other cases, rate is 16%. How do you write a program to solve this problem? First of all, we can think about a flow chart. So the flow chart, it's something look like here. So we start the program, read the deposit amount, and check the first condition. Our first condition is whether the amount is less than 1,000. If yes, we print the interest rate. If not, we check the second condition. If that second condition is satisfied, we print this. If not, we check the third condition. If that satisfy, we print that. If not, we print the last one. So that's how the flow charts look like. Okay, we will see those problems, uh, uh, C codes, uh, and a little bit other things as well, uh, and then move on this lecture. Okay, let me... Uh, share my terminal uh, uh, to demonstrate that. So I share the terminal, everybody see that? Uh, I will start my uh, uh, Docker image. My GCC Docker image. Uh, it has the GCC compiler, and then I uh, go to the home directory of the image, that is where I store the uh, codes. Uh, yes, I go there in the uh, this directory. It has some codes. All right. Let's have a look uh, our uh, simple problem which we discuss uh, that is basically uh, print uh, cool or hot based on the uh, temperature value. We want to print uh, cool or hot uh, based on our 
uh, based on the temperature value. So let me write a simple program for that uh, using VI editor. I start a simple program, let's say uh, cool.c. Uh, so I start with including the standard input output library. I include stda stda or dot h library standard we put out for library first uh -huh. and then my simple program is something like that this is my main method yeah i want a variable to read the temperature so maybe i create an integer variable for that for temperature and i set it to be zero at the beginning and then I instruct the users to enter the temperature by using printf statement. And I say uh, the temperature like that. And I maybe give this prompt and then put the new line. All right. Then I do scan it. And then give a format a string. So since it is integer, it is D. And then I pass the address of temperature variable to the scanner function. So it has printf. Sorry, I forgot to close the formatted string here on the top. Right. Uh, then I do scan it. Then I can check the if condition. How do I check that? I say if the temperature is less than or equal 30, I print if I print cool. Right? Else. I print hot. Right then. Right. And I close my program. So you see if S. I save that. Then compile it. Compile and run my program. See, so it asks the temperature. I type this. It's say hot. So if I want to put this line here, instead of new line, I, I remove my new line. It might be nice. So here, if we have new line, it go to the next line at reading the temperature so if i write like that you see it get the same line so i type maybe it's temperature is 45 degrees let it print hot so it's very simple so instead of if else now if else uh, let's try to use this uh, channel operator which i explained question mark can call it. So how do I do that? Right. Same program I modify in that way. So in order to do that, I kind of like comment these two lines, then compiler will ignore that. And if I comment these two lines using comment character, compiler will ignore these two lines. So, so I write the same thing with the other. So here I need to put then condition. My condition is temperature less than or equal 30. After that, I put question mark. Then I write what I want to do if that's satisfied. What I want to do is print cool. After that, I put colon 
and then need to write what I want to do if that condition get false. Say printed and then say hot. Like that. So if that condition true, this one will execute. If false, that one will execute. And okay, I forgot to put return. So it's not mandatory, but it's a good practice. Always we return, uh, write a return statement as last uh, line here. Okay. I save that and I compile the program. Okay, I got the error. So, so why it get error? Uh, let's see. Uh, it won't need the colon here. Is that they say? Hmm, like that. Okay. You kill. When you get error, you don't need to be panic. You can carefully have a look and try to correct that. So you see, I corrected it. So I run that. So it asks temperature type 2, and it's a cool. And 34, it's a hot. So same thing. So you see, these two will do the same thing. We can write like that. Or we can write like that. So it's up to you to decide which way you code it. Right. So our next question, uh, or our next problem to remember is interest calculation, or show the interest values on the terminal. For that, you can write the program. Uh, in order to save time, I have already typed that program. So you see how my programs look like here. So I have main method, and then I create a float amount to read the amount value, and then using scan if I read the amount. So then I have set of if else set. So I check if less than 1000, I print this. So I use two percentage sign because if I use one, it take as a formatting character. So I have to type two, otherwise this percentage character may not get printed on the terminal. So then I check if else, then under else I put another if, and check whether it's less than or equal to 10,000. Then I put another if under the third else, and then on the fourth, fourth else, I put maybe my uh, interest rate is 16. And that's it. And then uh, finally, I have to return zero. Right. So now let's write it, uh, run this program after compile that. I have this. Uh, okay. and then it it asked me to type the amount I say this is the amount I am going to deposit so then in print interest rate is a percent so if I deposit this interest rate is 16 percent so you see how I use if you see here how I use if else if else conditions so same thing if I want I can implement like that so basically you may get confused with that so I maybe I delete that and rewrite it so you can understand how it works so same program my interest program using this operator if I write it 
So you see what I want to check the condition less than thousand. If correct, this part will execute. If false, if false, but what I'm going to do is if false, we I if we take the next line, that's also okay. I print uh interest rate is like eight right. so then it has only two parts this is correct because then thousand is correct this part false this part right let's first see whether it works using this you see execute now this compile that and then run it it has deposit this trust rate eight percent because it's greater than thousand right so there are now several conditions how do i add these several condition to this program very simple so what i want to do is now instead of this one i want to check a condition back so i do that like here i say now amount less than no cut ten thousand right so you see under four section i write another command this is amount less than no equal ten thousand then what should i do then if that is satisfied I need to print this equation. If not, I want to print it. The interest rate is like twelve percent. Like here. So actually, in this false part, as you may understand, I have another condition. So then, why not I write like that? Here, like that. I say again, then amount less than or equal 100,000 and put this, then it is 12%. If not, so I have to put this column here. If not, I say is print sixteen percent like here. I'm sorry, column is not there, right? Like that. So you see several conditions we combine one after other. So let's see whether it get compiled. Oops, some issues. You don't need to be panicked. We can carefully look at what's the issue. So this is a condition, right? Condition printf colon, and then this part we have the condition comma printf and then colon and then we have condition comma with a colon ah okay you see i forgot to close this formatted string now it should be okay yes good so i execute that it has the deposit amount i type this in the interest rate so you see we can implement the same question or we can solve the same problem in different way right now let's move on so we have let's move let's move to the slides back I go to the slides. So we 
we had a look this we we discussed that and then we solve this problem this is a flow chart and we wrote programs for that and then there are three problems i have given where you have to solve so in the first problem i say you have to write a program which read the number and check whether this number is less than zero that is negative greater than zero that is positive or zero there are three conditions to be checked then i ask you to write a program to check whether the given number is odd number or even number in the second problem in the third problem i have asked you to write a program to check whether a given character is vowel or constant if it is a vowel you know there are this character should be equal to a e i o u otherwise is a constant right so you can write those program yourself i will have a look on this odd even number problem i will show you so there you see i am reading a number here and i check i want to check whether that number is odd or even even numbers you know when you divide a number by 2 if it is if if we don't get any reminder for so that means if you take number mod 2 is equal to 0 so then that number is a even number otherwise this is odd number so we can using simple if else we can solve this problem we check whether number module 2 equal to 0 if this is true i print this otherwise i print that so by doing that i can check whether the number i enter is a even or odd number you can try to implement yourself two programs for one and three you are sent right in the last part of this session i would like to discuss some other keywords or the other method which we can use to check the conditions so there is a special kind of control structure available in most of the programming language so c as well call it as switch case statements so instead of if else ladder so like checking if else if else condition several times we can use what we call it as switch case however switch case statement check only the equality so when you have a look on the flow chart of switch case it something look like so for example we have uh, some expressions and we check given in side of the switch statement and then we check if that a uh, value of this expression equal to several conditions so we only check equal so using switch case we cannot check greater than or less than like relational operations so we have a expression given the value of this expression is equal to one given one it's a case one so there are a set of codes we going to execute if that is not equal to given constant it go to the second case and second case check whether that is equal to the second constant if not go to the third and so on. so we it's similar to fs ladder so in the c syntax would look like that here so there is a switch statement and we write the first case second case and then we can have a default case at the end if any of these not match it's jump to the default case so in the case statements as i mentioned it check only the equality so we in the switch statement here in the switch line 
we don't have expression in stroke, we have a variable. That's also fine. So that thing we have is a variable called n. If that n is equal to this, this part will execute. If that n is equal to this, this part will execute. And that n is equal to, not equal to any of these, the default part will execute. So that's how switch case works. When you write a switch case statement, we must remember to put the break just before the next case or at the end of each case. We must put the break. If you don't put the break, so the execution will continue. So for example, if n is let's say equal to case two and it comes here, execute, if there is a keyword called break here, it jump outside the case. If there are no keyword called break, it continues after this match and default part also will be executed. So for example, let's say this n equal to constant one. So then that part will execute and it comes to break, stop execution, the rest, and the execution will be jump outside the case statement. If there are no break, so it continues the execution. Because of that, you must put break at the end of each case. Right. Now, let's share my terminal again and see how the switch case works with some example. I might have some example to show you how it works. Okay, I'll take uh, maybe my vowel example. So how that it write using switch case is something like that. So you see, I'm reading Maybe before that, I take, uh, let's see. So I, uh, so I take the another example here. So there is an example for cat. I take that to explain you if it's, uh, sorry, cache set. So you see, so I implement simple calculator using switch case. So I have already typed to save the time. So here you see, I am including the standard library. And I'm including two libraries, std library and stdio library. Then I think I don't need this anyway. Uh, let's see. I have a then character here, character type variable for operator, and then three variables called well, first number, second number, and the answer. And type of the operator is uh, type of the variable is double. What I would like to do is Based on the operator which I entered, I want to process these first and two num first and second numbers. So for example, if operator is plus, these two will be added and put it into the answer. If that operator is minus, this one will subtract. If the operator is multiplied, these two will be multiplied together. So, First, I ask the user to enter the operator plus, minus, multiply, or maybe division. Uh, it's division is missing here. Maybe I, I type like division. These are the operators of user should enter one of these operators. And then I use scan a function to read the character. C formatted string says the system, I would 
like to read the character to the variable called operator. Then I ask the user to enter two numbers, first one and the second one, both are the double numbers. So formatted string for double is LF. I pass the address of the first number, second number. After that, I'm using switch case statement to handle each and every case. Here I have four cases. That is plus, minus, multiplication, and division. So, so you see how I use this switch statement to do so. I write like switch and then give an operator, this character, then check whether this character equal to plus, minus, multiply, or divide. So these are the four cases which I am going to test. So what condition I check? Only the equality, whether this operator equal to plus, operator is equal to minus, multiply or divide, division. So if it is plus, so I execute this statement. So there I add two numbers together and then say stop. So if it is minus, we subscribe first and second number and assign that result to the answer and break. And the operator is equal to multiply, then we execute this statement. That means we multiply these two numbers and assign to the answer and break. Similarly, division, we divide these two numbers and if any other cases it's come to default and say error, please enter the correct operator and exit from the program. Finally, I print the answer on the terminal using this long printf string. Okay, so let's run this program and see whether how it works. Okay, I have, I have some characters here, that's fine. I fit it without saying it. I say GCC, and see it's get compiled, and then I execute a dot out. So it asks whether I, to ask me to enter the operator, I enter star, then two operands, there are two numbers. And I enter 2L and 4. So you see 2L multiplied 4 is 48. I go down. Similarly, I can say dy, division is the operator. Two numbers are, let's say, 48 and 2L. So it's 4. Like that, it do the whole of calculate using switch case. So let me do something to show you. So the result of removing the break. So let's say I comment this break line. Then in this case, minus case, there are no break, right? So then I save and quit and compile and run. So I say now my operator is equal, sorry, minus subscription value, and then type five and six. So then my answer five subscribe six is 30. My answer is 30. How that get happens? Oh, I got 30 here. So I got 30 because I have removed the break. So I go back to the program. So you see there are no break here. So then what happened? Program will match this since I enter subtraction mark minus one, and then first number will 
subscribe by the second and put the answer value. Since there are no break, it continues the execution. And it comes here and multiply this one and second one, then the answer is 30 and break. The program jumped out actually here. So at the time of jumping out of the switch case block, answer is 30. So that's why 30 got printed. So in case if I kind of come in this break, it will continue. And we get the answer as final answer as division in case of we enter minus and star any of this. I will show you that. So I compile and run as I enter this and type three and four. So take the answer of division. So even I write like that. So I type uh, multiplication and say three and four, still get the division. Because however, if I press plus, and say three and four, I get five correct answer. Why? Here there is a break because after that it get break, but after that it don't break, it continue. So because of that, when you write switch case statement, you must remember to type break. Otherwise you may not, you, you will get unexpected result. So the structure is switch, operator and case statement and need to define different cases. At the end of each case, we have to put break. So however, there are some situations where we can use switch case without break. So for example, our best example for it, that is our vowel example. Maybe I will show you this sample program for vowel. Not this. Maybe I uh, have a program which implemented using ifs. This one. This one. So you see, it checks the given character is vowel or not. So here you see I asked to enter alphabet character C and then check whether that character is equal to A, O, E, O, I, O, 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 U. If my character equal to any of these, so I combine with O conditions, the result will assign to this. Then given character is any of these actually capital characters, capital letters, uppercase letters. So then result will create it assigned to that. If one of these are true, we enter a vowel. So that how our program works. So you see I have several condition combined with O. So same program, I can implement using switch case in interesting way. I quit the program. So this is how I implement the same program with, with switch case. So I'm checking only the simple letters. So there I asked to enter the character and I scan the character. Then I use switch state and I put the character C and say if case A, nothing I do. If case E, nothing. I, nothing. O, nothing. U, then I say print work and break. So then what happened? If the user enter A, O, E, O, I, O, 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 U, any of these, any of these characters, execution will start from any of these cases. So let's assume user enter I, 
then execution start from here right and continue and print well so if someone enter a then it enter here it's continue because all of those conditions are vowels all of those cases are vowel and print vowel and print otherwise it's print this my default condition is this and my given cases are this so there i don't use break because i don't want to if i use break here then i have to print vowel at each time i have to say print vowel break print vowel break print vowel break print vowel break and so on. at each cases i don't want to do so without doing it what i do i define my cases all those cases combined with o actually and then print vowel at the last case and then break and finally i define my default case so it comes to default any of these not satisfied so you see i nicely use switch case instead of if else to solve the same problem so let me show you how that program works if you're interested so i run a dot out it has a character i type q it's not a vowel then i type i it's a vowel then o it's a vowel like that so you see it's use switch case instead of it pairs right let me back to the presentation so the today what we learn is conditions so relational operators are used to build the conditions and if keyword is used to check the condition we can use we if with if else if you use we can use if else if else several times it it calls that if else ladder and if you have several conditions to combine you can use logical statements and there is operator to instead of if else if want to use it and we studied how we solve this simple problem and we solve this back interest problem and you have to solve the first these three problems you have i will upload to the learning management system this activity so actually i show some code already but you need to write the code yourself to solve those three problems and then we study the switch case statement so switch case statement similar to if else ladder the difference is in the switch case we only check the equality with if else ladder we can check any conditions so that's the difference and also i mentioned the use of break the break stop execution and jump out of the case, case statements so sometimes we can omit the break in some some problems when you solve them we can omit the break but for but in most of the situation we must use the break otherwise we may get the unexpected result so that's the end of the session thank you very much and for listening so i will upload some activities based on this session so please try it yourself and upload those programs to lms so as i remember you again we cannot do problem solving or programming without doing it we cannot swim without jumping to the water 
similarly, without write the code and compile and running those codes, you cannot learn programming. So when you write a code and compile it, you might get errors. You don't need to get panic. You have to carefully look at correct errors and compile it back and it might get compiled. So like that, you should practice programming. So in order to practice the programming, you have to write programs, compile it. Just listen to those videos, may, by just listening to those videos, you may not be able to learn programming. Unfortunately, some of you may not have access to compilers, uh, computers, and then maybe a C compilers. So some of may have access to the phones. So there are some C compilers, small compilers, which works on top of phones as well. So I will show you such maybe in some other session. So the people who don't have access to the computer. So I guess everybody has access to the phone. Even you can write a simple C program on the phone, but you know, typing a program on a small smartphone is not so easy. Uh, but you can manage with the phones if you also want to do so. So there are some apps, smart app, phone apps available uh, where you can write simple C programs using those apps. Right, you can try to find some apps, so I will show you later on. So what I want to highlight is program, program, and continue do programming to learn programming. 